Now this question here, if you were to get something like this, would definitely be towards the end of the paper, if not the very end of the paper. Still doable as a two unit student. Two unit students will get this kind of question exactly in the HSC if they're unlucky. So I'm just going to show you quickly how I would do this. If you don't have any particular interest in this right now, that's fine. You work quietly at your trick stuff. But maybe some of you are looking at this and thinking, I don't know how I would do that. So I'm going to show all of you now. Okay. Also, I make no apologies. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the quick version. Um, so I may not explain that all every individual step all along the way because I have shown you how to do some of these before. So if you want that, then go back to the year or come and hassle me another time when we have more time on our end. If you want to work around something else, that's totally fine. Just do it quietly. Um, can I just get a show of hands? Just so I know who to make eye contact with. Who's watching this? Uh, okay, most. All right, thank you. Hands down. Here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to approach this as a graph. And think about this as a graph. I'm going to just do a rough sketch of it, and I want to know when the graph is below a half, wherever that happens to be. Okay. So my first job is, let's graph this thing. I am going to think of it as this absolute value plus this absolute value. Now, do you remember, I gave you something like this in the quiz that you just did, right? Um, you know what this looks like, and if you slap an absolute value sign on it, but negative at the front, then instead of being all above the x-axis, you're going to be all below the x-axis. And that's exactly what this is. Okay? So watch how quickly you can graph this once you sort of get the hang of what is going on. Here's my axes. Okay? Absolute value of x minus 1. That's been shifted. It's, this is this, right? But it's been shifted one unit to the right. So I'm just going to quickly draw on that. There we go. That's all the detail that I need. This guy is two things. Number one. I'm going to shift him to the left, two units, so a bit further than that, and then I'm going to flip him upside down. Okay, So that's one unit, so I guess just to keep the scale, one, two, and then down. Bam, there I go. Okay. Now these two things, I need to add them. Okay. It's really easy, watch. Zero plus whatever is whatever. I don't even know where it is now, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. I just want the general picture. Zero plus whatever is whatever. Okay, have a look at the outsides. See how they've got the same gradient but in opposite directions. So when you add them, they're going to cancel out. Okay, so this is just going to be a horizontal line over there. Same thing happens over here for the opposite reason. Horizontal line. And guess what? When you add straight lines, no matter which way they're going, you're going to get more straight lines. I'm done. There's the graph. Okay. So now um, I've got this picture over here. I want to know where is it less than below a half. Okay, So now I need to be a little more careful about my scale. I'm going to say, where's a half? Well, it's got to be somewhere. What did I say that was? This is the absolute value of x minus 1. So this is 1 right here. So a half is roughly there. Okay, Are you right with that? So this is y equals a half. Clearly, I can already see the parts that I'm interested in are these guys down here. Do you agree with that? That's all the stuff below. <coughs> so really the last piece of information is, what on earth is that value? Okay, that's all that matters to me. Okay. So I look and I see which of the branches are going to be combined to give me this line so I can find a point of intersection. We'll have a look at the branches. I haven't labelled them, but can you see what they are? Clearly this one must be y equals 1 minus x. Do you agree? You see how it's, it's going down? This one over here must, by the same logic, be 2 minus x. Do you agree? Oh, sorry, minus 2 minus x. Does that make sense? Do you see where I got that from? Right? It's got to be the one sloping down. It can't be x plus 2. It must be the negative version. So in order to get the equation of this middle, middle branch, okay, I'm just going to add this and this. Uh, that's y equals... Hmm, minus 2x, which accounts for the steepness of it. You see how the middle part is steep. Uh, plus, minus, minus 1. Minus 1? Yeah. Which, by the way, because of the awesomeness of my graph, you can see, like, look, he pretty much does hit the axis at negative 1. Right? And that was, you saw how roughly and quickly I did that. Right? Okay, so this is the equation of that middle bit. I just need to know when it intersects with a uh, half. So can you tell me what to do? Okay, I'll add one. 
to both sides, which is going to make this uh, 3 on 2, and it leaves a negative 2x over there. Now what? I will divide both sides by negative 2, which I believe gives me negative 3 quarters. Are you happy with that? Does it look like it should be negative 3 quarters? Yeah, not bad. Okay. So if that is negative 3 quarters, right, that's the boundary value, am I going to the left or am I going to the right? I'm going to the right because look, these are the bits that are below the, the green line. So x is, if it's to the right, greater than negative 3 quarters and I'm home. Okay? Question? In a test A lab, just This is my working. And I would argue, if you think about, I mean, I can do this whole thing algebraically. There are three cases to this. Uh, one, two, three. You can lay all of them out and you can get exactly the same answer out. I would argue that the, the working of this is a whole lot clearer than about 15 lines of algebra that will still achieve the same answer, but like I've got to read through all those and like what's going on, whereas it's, it speaks for itself. Okay? So this amount of working is perfect to generate an answer. Okay.